Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back. We are glad to have you with us for our second study in the Followers of Jesus series. And I'm here with Dennis Darville, our Southeast Region Director. And we are really excited to continue talking about this topic. Although today's theme is a little, little more serious uh, in terms of what's involved with regards to following Jesus. But I want to start, as we always do, with a good golf question for Dennis. And uh, I'm going to set a trap for him a little bit and, yeah. say, uh, right. and ask you just whether golf in your mind is an expensive sport, as it's often reputed to be, mm -hmm. or, you know, what, what is the cost of playing golf? Well, it, well it, you know, it certainly can be. Uh, if you're buying PXGs or something, you know, I mean, you know, can be pricey. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, you know, if you're if you're frugal and good steward, doesn't have to be. You're right. Uh, plus, having been in the golf business for all those years, I know what it takes to design a product, develop that product, uh, go produce that product, manufacture mm -hmm. that product, bring it, landed duty paid into our country if we're producing it somewhere else. And then marketing that product and getting that product distributed. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of cost in it. So I, I, there might be some scoundrel out there, you know, gouging people. But on the in the main or on the whole, I think it's fair. It's fair. What about the cost? Uh, not in terms of material cost, but what if I want to be a good player? There's a uh, kind of cost there, isn't there? Yeah. You know the. Uh, you know this discussion, and most golfers do. What was Hogan's secret? Oh, yes. Everybody's been chasing that forever, right? I, the best answer I ever heard was Trevino said he dug it out of the dirt. Yeah. That was his secret. And, of course, his point was that it was practice. That was the secret yeah. that Hogan, like so many in our generation, uh, I, even this past week, I heard them discussing a new up and coming young man. Um, and they went on and on and raved about his work ethic. Mm -hmm. So if you think about cost in that sense, a real commitment of time and energy and study and dedication. And to our point, sitting under a wise teacher, following somebody, training you, I think there are lots of costs. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of costs. Absolutely. Let's talk about the cost of following Jesus. And this is a, a, a secret sometimes that evangelists hold on to. Uh, the work of the evangelist a lot of time is, hey, I want to get as many people as I can to walk this sawdust trail, as right. they say, you know, to, to come forward, to receive Christ. And yet Jesus himself said, nobody builds a tower without thinking about the cost. Right. And the same is true for following me. There's going to be a cost. And you need to think about that cost before you just kind of jump on the Jesus bandwagon. What does that bring to mind for you? Yeah, that's, that is a topic worthy of our deepest concentrations, mm -hmm. focus and thought, because it is prevalent in scripture. Uh, and especially in, I mean, this is one of the primary reasons we have the gospels. Yeah. Uh, Jesus is saying, follow me. And for instance, in Matthew gospel, a, a gentleman comes up to Christ and says, I'll follow you wherever you lead. Right. And the first thing Jesus does is say, well, okay, but you got to let the dead bury the dead, bury the dead because the gentleman was qualifying he was laying down the terms of his commitment to follow Christ. He said, I got to go home, take care of some family things. First, I need to, I've got a farm. I need to go home, take care of some matters there. I've got some business matters. And once I get those straightened out, well, then he was trying to dictate the terms. And Jesus, it almost comes off harsh. But if you understand the context, you'd see the wisdom that Jesus says, no, no. If you're going to follow me, you follow me on my terms. Yeah. That's, uh, that's not something we hear preached very often, um, but it's one of those things that is so important because we can't have an easy believism. 
We can't have this thing that says, you know, really all you have to do is kind of get the stamp in your passport and you're off to heaven. It's all Christ getting to heaven. But there's a lot of life to live before getting to heaven. And Jesus talked about that too. How do you live your life? What's exactly. it going to, to get there? And, uh, and the, uh, the apostles too, of course, did not pull punches. They lived in, a, in a, an environment of persecution. And uh, they had to be aware of that. And just reading the book of Acts alone, for instance, to your point on the apostles, yeah, these men, these women had consecrated their lives to Christ. Christ is now in heaven at the right hand of the Father. And now the church is growing. And at every step, they're meeting opposition. Many of these men and women gave their, uh, their very life. They were martyred. In fact, the very word to be a witness for Christ uh, in the original is maturo, which means mar it's where we get the word martyr wow. from. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dennis. This is, uh, I know, a difficult topic, and we'll unfold it a little bit as we go forward, some of the ways that we might uh, be asked to sacrifice on Christ's behalf. But um, it's a big discussion for now, I'm sure, and I think our, our folks will, very important. will yeah. Yeah, find it very valuable. Thank you all. Great to have you with us, and we'll see you next time.